Hey, good people. This is the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I'm your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. I have so much to share with you this evening. Welcome. Let's get started. Hey, good people. Happy Tuesday. Is your week off to a good start? If not, it's about to get better. Thank you for tuning in this evening. It's the end of the month. New energy is on its way. And this theme park called 2020 is almost over. (laughs) You know, I went for a walk to my dumpster to take out the trash this morning. And on this brisk walk, I had an idea to talk about my steps after leaving the salon. I know I'll be back to it, but in the role of the owner. But my days of working in a shop under somebody else are over. While walking back to my apartment, I had a quick flashback of my day this time last year when I would be getting ready for work during the slower season. I was optimistic about possibly making money today, but also excited about studying for my GMAT and applying to grad school. Life literally changed for me in the matter of 365 days. This time of year, when the seasons change, seasons change, if you know what I mean. So this year, I knew something was different when I decided that I wanted my nails done and a pedicure. That's right, this nail tech has a nail tech because let's be honest, by the time we're done making someone else's hands and feet look beautiful, we barely have time for our own. I think, I think this is life after the salon. Y'all, I'm at a stage in my life where so many doors have opened and behind each door was a great opportunity to dedicate the next two to five years of my life to, which can be overwhelming, but it has been a blessing. Yeah, this, I, I think, yeah, this is life after working in the salon. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome to Confessions of a Nail Tech I thank you for finding me, and I hope you are following me on social media at Nails by Ra. That's Ra, R-A-H. And also my YouTube channel, Nails by Ra. It's a, it's a work in progress, but so am I. I thought of this evening's topic while reflecting this morning. As you know, I am a quarter of the way through my master's in business administration program at the Clark Atlanta University. And as excited as I am about continuing my education, this was a pivotal moment in my career as a salon professional. I've been in the game, I'm coming up on 10 years very, very soon. And I am on a journey to become a salon owner and small business influencer. I do have an opportunity to work in consumer banking, focusing on small businesses, strategy, and management. So I'm excited. However, I keep thinking about how I can implement what I am learning in my formal education with what I learned in my technical education that I got in nail school. Again, that's a work in progress, but so am I. So something I wanted to talk about this evening was my life after leaving the salon, you know, and I touched on this a little bit in season one, but you know it's time to leave a place of employment when you start to feel undervalued, even after making your concerns known with the person in charge. If you have listened to season one, my first episode is dedicated to knowing your worth. So if you haven't, pause it here, go listen to it, and then come back if you need to. But in this episode, I talk at length about setting your price and understanding the value that you bring to the salon. Yes, even my students who just became licensed bring value to a salon. So you must know when you start to feel undervalued that it is time to part ways. I'm not saying just up and quit, because I've done that before too. (laughs) It wasn't pretty, but I've done it. What I'm saying is to have a plan for your life after leaving the salon. I officially started my career... mm, 
goodness gracious, in 2012 as a nail technology student. And I was licensed, I was a licensed professional by 2013. I was equal parts excited as intimidated because most of my clients during our workshop hours in, this, in the nail school until I graduated had been family and friends. Very few had complaints about my work and my speed. So when I started working in a salon, which was Asian owned, I felt intimidated by the skill, speed, and amount of money that the other techs were making. And yes, I did mention Asian owned because in my community, that is the bulk of the salon owners in my com where I come from. That's the bulk of the salon owners. It's very seldom that you see a salon, nail salon specifically owned by black other black or other. So what I can appreciate about that experience, I'll be honest, is that I am always placed in environments where I have support and community. So those insecurities that I had were all self-taught and self-sabotaging because my cohorts and my boss at the time would always encourage me to increase my speed and trust my skill set. I kid you not, in part of my profanity, my boss at the time said, if you do a good job, people will, will F with you. <laughs> yeah, so so color, that, color those legs, next uh, couple of word, letters that come after F with you. So that's what she said. She said, if you do a good job, people will F with you and they will keep coming back. So I'll be honest, in that transitional time, there were moments when I'd cry on my drive back home because people were so mean to new nail technicians. And this is back in the day. So people did not, they did not take your feelings into consideration when they got their nails done. And some still don't, but I'll be honest, that built character for me because we live in a world where there are nice people, but we also have some mean people, mean ass people. And especially when you come into a salon, we can be some catty women. And we have to learn how to deal with both. We just do. That's part of the game. That's part of the sacrifice. You just have to know how to deal with both kinds of people. So when I decided that I wanted to relocate to Atlanta, I made an exit plan and began looking for nail salons in Atlanta and surrounding areas. I mentioned uh, licensed reciprocity and moving to a new state in season one, episode five. So again, if you haven't listened to that episode and you have questions or you're at that moment where you're thinking about moving to a new state, but you're only licensed in that in your current state, Check out that episode. If you have questions, feel free to email me. I'm open to answer all. So I set sights on life after the salon when I moved. My boss at the time wrote a letter of recommendation for me for the Georgia State Board of Cosmetology. And the rest at that salon is history. Uh, I relocated here in 2018. And when I started working in Georgia, the start was beautiful. I was making enough money to cover my expenses and save a little bit every now and then. But then I experienced our first slow season and it forced me to make some changes fast. Um, I'm going to be personal here. During that slow season, I was almost evicted. I had trouble keeping food in the house and it was all bad for a couple of months. I, I thought coming to Atlanta in this in this market of beauty, and this is kind of one of the beauty capitals of the U.S., I just assumed that women here got their nails and toes done year-round. I didn't know that we hit slow, slow seasons as we did back home. So that was a little bit of a shock for me. So I had, at that moment, I put in myself that, okay, this time, next, this time the following year, I need to be aware of when the slow season is going to start so that I can save some money and or find another job, ultimately. So in those couple of months, um, I learned then that something different had to be done. I was tired of working multiple jobs at one time and not being able to keep any money realistically. So some personal things had to, had to change as far as how I was handling my money and my finances. I also realized that I did need more income. Simple as that. And I think I mentioned this all throughout season one, that if you are going to dedicate your life to being a full-time nail technician, then that needs to be your bread and butter. You need to be able to handle your expenses, any uh, outstanding expenses. You need to be able to handle all of your um, way of life and living expenses from that one job. And if it can't do that, it's time to go. It does. So um, the salon I was working for started not bringing in the kind of money that I was used to. 
and I, I really made a plan. Um, during the start of our second slow season that following year, which was last year, um, to go back to corporate life and also to apply to graduate school. I started to make an exit plan in June of 2019 when I noticed that even during our peak season, we were slower that year. And um, by the end of October 2019, I was done with the salon and um I moved on. So I was also studying to take my GMAT exam, which would have granted me um, admission into graduate school, depending on how well I did. And um, yeah, I'll talk about that at length. <laughs> I'll talk about my exit plan after the break. I know this is the break right now, but I really need you to do me a favor. Go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. It is Nails by Ra. I'll include it in the description box for this episode, but do me a huge favor. Follow me across all social media and just show some support. Once you do, leave a comment and I'll be sure to comment back and maybe hit you up with some goodies from Confessions of a Nail Tech. All right, back to the show. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. The best part? You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Please be sure to follow me on social media at Nails by Ra. That's Ra, R-A-H. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook at Nails by Ra. That's Ra. R-A-H, all one word. I have received so much love since the start of this podcast, which is my baby. And I thank you all for listening, reaching out to me and receiving my baby and taking care of her the way that you have. I really appreciate it. I'm a proud mommy right now. I do want to give a few shout outs to those who have been rocking with me, even when I forgot to upload season two's first episode. I really appreciate you all. (laughs) I first want to say thank you to my student listeners. I promise you, I get choked up whenever I read any of your messages because I wished I had something like this when I was in school. And it truly does warm my heart to know that I am making a difference and encouraging more nail technicians to keep going. So first and foremost, shout out to Elizabeth. Now, I didn't see Elizabeth's original message because of Instagram security filter to separate your direct messages from your followers and the people who who you aren't following. And then the beginning of October was crazy for me with school. So I posted and go, I would post and go. It was very seldom that I would check DMs at all. So I apologize for missing that. So charge it to my head, not my heart. So I saw Elizabeth's message uh, weeks after she sent it to me. So if you are listening, Thank you and good luck in school, Elizabeth. Please email me at nailsbyra at gmail.com with any of your nail tech questions. And I'm working on a giveaway for you because I felt really bad. I really wish I could have gotten to you before um, before your assignment was due. So again, charge it to my head, not my heart. It is all peace and love over here. Also, shout out to at Nailing Nashville, who is also a student and practicing nail technician. I'm so proud of you. I see your work and congratulations on your new position at Poppy and Monroe. Follow them on Instagram. Tell them raw with Confessions of a Nail Tech Podcast sent you. I want to give a shout out to all of my, again, all of my students. I, it really warms me up to hear that you all are listening and encouraged by what I'm saying and doing. So trust me, I, I'm here for you. If you ever need anything, please email me. Don't DM me. Email me if you have questions regarding anything, because sometimes I won't get the DMs. Or if you do, comment, hey, Ra, check your DMs. I sent you something. I'll look. But yes, charge it to my head, not my heart. 
So also a uh, shout out to Allison. She is at Mommy Manicurist and recently found me. So I'm so happy she found the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. You really did make my day when you reached out to me and let me know that you're listening and that I am helping you along the way. I love hearing this. I love the words of encouragement. So thank you so much. Shout out to the lacquer, the berry out of Florida. I love the play on words. And <laughs> thank you so much for listening. I love this. Um, the Lacquer the Berry is a nail polish brand out of, or I believe, Orlando, Florida. It is vegan, black owned, and also a practicing nail technician. So check them out. Shout out to Ashley at AE underscore nail studio 531. Thank you so much for listening. And I absolutely love that emerald set. Emerald is my birthstone, so I go ham whenever I see it or any color very similar to it done right. Um, sidebar, Jade is the New Black by OPI was my jam because it was the closest thing to Emerald that I could find when I was getting my nails done years ago in the shop. So thank you. And last, but certainly not least, because she is such a wonderful person, and although I haven't met her yet, I feel safe calling her a mentor, but shout out to Gloria, the PA nail artist. She found me when I first started my podcast this past spring, and she has been giving me professional advice and encouragement since day one. She is one of the first and only nail educators in the state of Pennsylvania for IBX, and I truly do appreciate you. It warms my heart when nail technology students and nail technician veterans can enjoy these confessions. Make sure you are following these queens on social media, and I am excited to see the journey of all the students who are listening. I am excited to witness all of the great things that our business owners are doing who are listening. Listen, we are part of a wonderful community, and I'm just doing my part in passing on the knowledge, the stories, and the confessions of a nail tech. Again, be sure to follow me on social media all across Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, I'm on there at Nails by Raw. That's Raw, R-A-H, all one word. And also check out my Teespring store if you have time. I'm working on masks and cute t-shirts for nail technicians. I saw all of these cute designs for professionals, but where were the ones for the nail techs? So when you get a chance, check me out. Okay, back to regular programming. Hmm. I was having some tea. I feel like I'm going to start doing more shout outs more often. It's my way of saying thank you because if my podcast had no listeners, it wouldn't mean as much. It wouldn't matter. So I truly am thankful for all of you. Thank you. Now, before the break, I was talking about my exit plan. I knew I still wanted to be involved in nail technology at some capacity. An opportunity presented itself in July of last year that I took full advantage of and saw through um, this year in March. So something that I was really excited about because I had no real background in negotiation, but I went with my heart. The first thing I did was have the desire to keep pushing for greatness, okay? So I mentioned it earlier, the moment you start feeling the moment you don't start feeling valued, you feel undervalued, is when you start to put this plan into place. So I made what is called a fire plan first for my finances so that I could be financially sound for the next steps that I was going to take. I learned about the fire plan from a podcast called The Trill MBA Show. This show helped me transition back into corporate life after the salon, helped prepare me for graduate school. So in the midst of planning my exit, I brought in reinforcements like podcasts and people who were in places where I wanted to be as encouragement to keep pressing forward. The flyer, fire, <laughs> the fire plan is when you write out all of your expenses, income, and savings plan that will cover your expenses should you become unemployed for an amount of time. Now, that amount of time is completely up to you whether it is by choice or not. The goal is to have a financial safety net, and that was my first step. After reviewing my finances, I had to keep it real with myself about my next career move. I knew I needed health insurance and PTO, bare minimum. I needed those two things. 
Oh, I mean, well, three things, uh, an increase in income, <laughs> no lie, but a steady increase in income, health insurance, PTO. That was my bare minimum. Step two, I created a five-year plan for my life after the salon. I thought about the things I wanted to accomplish over the next five years. It is important to do this because I recently looked at it. And when I tell you, I was able to cross off quite a few things. I was so proud of myself. I had to pat myself on the back because my life really did change in a year. So after that, I did step three. I updated my resume and began applying for jobs. While still working at the salon, I was studying for my GMAT exam and I kept positive affirmations on my mirror in my bathroom. Step four, in my exit plan, uh, was to execute my fire plan. Each paycheck that I received, I put away a little bit of money into a savings account and slowly chipped away at my least expensive credit card bill. I learned that the bulk of my income was going into revolving credit card debt. So step three, save your money. Save your money. Pay off anything that you can pay off, but also try and save if you can. Step five, write, and this is important because I believe in manifestation. Step five, write down the date that you plan to leave your current job and stick with it. I gave myself until December 1st, 2019. I knew that two weeks from that date, I would be letting my boss know at that time that I would be leaving no matter what. Okay, so that's the five step, five step plan. First, identify that you need to leave. Two, look into your fire plan, create a five-year plan. Three, update your resume and apply for jobs and stay positive and patient with yourself. Step four, you need to implement that fire plan, execute it into your way of living. And step five, manifest. Write down the date, put a date to it. Look at your five-year plan, put some dates to it. Look at the most thing that you want to accomplish within the next three to four months, three to four weeks. Put dates next to it. It is important. So a quick praise report, and I don't like to brag, but I just feel like I need to tell you so that you know that this works. I promise you, I got the interview for a new job on October 19th, 2019 with better pay, benefits, and PTO, that is paid time off. So I can go on vacation with this allotted time that I've earned and still be paid. That is wonderful for someone like me. <laughs> By November 11th, 2019, I was in my new position in Buckhead. And from my first paycheck at that new job, I invested in my IRA savings account and began planning my next moves. So in January of this year, I reached out to the company I mentioned earlier that reposted my work on their Instagram page, and I inquired about being a brand ambassador. Since I knew I still wanted to be involved in nails at some capacity, I felt brand ambassadorship would be it. And by March, I received free products to conduct tutorials with my YouTube channel, Nails by Ra, check me out, from that company. So it is premium nails. I'll put everything in the description bar. And then, unfortunately, you have to expect the unexpected. COVID-19 shut down all salon operations. Mm -hmm. So that plan I had, it, it helped me because I was no longer in the salon and I, was, I had steady income and I was able to work remotely. So I started Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast in April and worked on ways to build my dream position. I interviewed with Clark Atlanta University in May, and I was accepted in June, June 9th to be exact, 2020. I paid off all of my credit card debt by October 1st of this year, and I am currently in the final stages of becoming a summer associate in 2021 for a bank working in consumer banking for small businesses. Listen, the power of a plan is important. Again, I'm not mentioning my accomplishments to brag, but they are mentioned to encourage you to take power of your life's plan. Put it into motion. This is year one and a half of my five-year plan, and already I am excited about the results. In all that you do, have a plan. I know there are circumstances which may have altered our plans and be beyond our control, but always have a plan. So, nail techs life after the salon will be 
whatever you make of it. I chose to marry my technical and formal experiences to help create a space to assist nail tech students and encourage current nail techs and salon owners. I document my journey on YouTube and Instagram in addition to tutorials. I see some great things happening. My goodness. Something I enjoy most is being able to enjoy my weekends again and go get pampered at another salon. I recently got my nails done. It's real quick. I recently got my nails done and a pedicure. And when I tell you, it's almost been a year since I was able to do that and it felt great. While getting my services done, I try to keep the fact that I am a nail technician hidden so that the nail technician can do their own thing. I want you to feel comfortable. I'm not competitive. I'm not picky. And I'm not, again, I'm not competitive by any means, but I do plan to inspire. So when I was mentioning how I remove my nails, and I, I completely forgot. When we start talking about nails, I get excited. So I forget. So the nail tech was shocked that I, I, I was able to take my nails off by myself. Now, if you know me, you know me well, you know that my nails are usually long, red, and natural. And I still consider them natural even if I have dip powder over them. I consider them natural when I don't have extensions, meaning tips. So the tech looks up at me and before she could express her concern, I said, I'm a nail tech too. And sometimes I really just wanna be pampered. <laughs> I had kind of put my hands up and, and surrender. Like, hey, I'm just here to enjoy myself. I'm not trying to push you or make your life any worse or make your life hard. I'm, you know, I'm just here. So we laughed and for the next hour and a half, I got a chance to hear this young lady's story and her plans for what's next because she was a new nail tech. She was young, fresh out of school, studied at Paul Mitchell and did a very good job on my nails minus one hiccup. But I've done it before too on myself. I use dip solution for my nails and the solution varies by brand and technique. So this particular salon used a gel resin and a spray activator, which was new for me. I had never seen nails done like that before, but I was really intrigued when she did it. Um, but they use that rather than the four step system that I'm used to and that I've done all my tutorials with for ANC, Kiara Sky and Premium Nails Elite Nail Dipping Design. So my thumb on my right hand would not cure properly. It just wouldn't. So after buffing it to correct it, it took off some of the color and it left behind a white patch. Usually I'm picky about it, but at this time I'm like, it's fine. So we redipped it and I could tell that the nail tech was becoming a little frazzled, but I assured her, you know, reassured her that I love my nails still and this was normal. User error. And sometimes the temperature in the salon can alter the chemicals reaction time. It's not a big deal, especially for me because I know how to fix it. And I had brought my own powder, so it's not like I couldn't go home and redip my nails. So the tech did a great job. She did a wonderful job, and she has me as a new client for sure. Um, this was good for my endorphins because I naturally enjoy helping others when it's time for others to help me. I end up helping them too, so if that makes sense. So after leaving the salon, I went shopping. And let me just say how much I missed my weekends. One of my goals... One of my professional goals is to develop a way for my employees, my future employees, to earn a living and take a couple of weekends for themselves throughout the year. We need a healthy work-life balance to avoid burnout. Trust me. So what I gather from life after the salon is weight gain. <laughs> I'm not up and bending and stooping so much anymore, but hey, that's all right. That'll be for another podcast. Um, accomplishments, and trying not to tell your nail tech that you are a nail tech, and then failing miserably at keeping it a secret. So for me, that was that's life after the salon. So feel free to email me with your life after the salon stories. I love to hear them and hear from you. Hey there. I know we talked about so much today and I cannot express how thankful I am for you. Here is a quick recap of this evening's episode. Simple, life after the salon is whatever you make it. Secondly, always have a exit planned. And third, always show gratitude. Until next time, ciao.
Thank you for tuning in to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I've been your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. Make sure you tune in next week, Tuesday, for our next episode. Looking forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, subscribe to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast and make sure you stay in the loop by following me across the board on social media at Nails by Ra. Also visit me at www.nailsbyra.com. Until next time.